They compass introduced to copolymerization reactions. Uh, we basically characterize the copolymer while it's being synthesized. And here we provide model independent features such as uh, composition mass distribution, composition drift, viscosity distribution, different reaction kinetics. Uh, but also we uh, study model dependent features such as reactivity ratios and average sequence length distributions. An important progress we have made a few years ago was into discrimination of commonomers of similar spectral characteristics. And uh, uh, here is our results from a random copolymer made by free radical polymerization reaction, uh, butyracrylate methyl metacrylate. And um, what we show here is the um, comonomer concentrations from both ACOM and GPC be computed based on following the UV spectra of the comonomers, shown in the next graph, which are the butylacrylate, methylmetacrylate, and copolymer. These are just selected spectra. Uh, knowing the concentration of the commonomers allows us to uh, determine the average composition drift during the copolymerizations, and shown on the right is the instantaneous reaction of the butylacrylate versus total conversion for reactions done with different initial commonomer composition. This uh, makes unnecessary to determine the reactivity ratios since we have the composition drift at each moment during the conversion. Copoly electrolytes are um, synthesized and monitored by ACOM as well. And uh, what we see here, it's a copolymer of acrylamide and styrene sulfonate. And shown on the left are the styrene sulfonate monomer conversion acrylamide conversion and molecular weight. As you can see, the styrene sulfonate finishes very quickly, uh, whereas acrylamide is not total, it's just 20-30% polymerized. As the styrene sulfonate finishes, acrylamide uh, polymerizes faster, and this allows us to obtain a blend, basically. Uh, first would be a copolymer, and second, part will be a um, homopolymer of acrylamide. And you can see this uh, huge difference in molecular weight. Shown on the right is raw data for this reaction. Solvent level, acrylamide, commonomer uh, signals from uh, UV, conductivity, another UV wavelength, uh, no scattering of viscosity for the commonomer baseline. As the reaction proceeds, uh, scattering is increasing, viscosity increases as well, whereas conductivity and UV signals decreases the monomer is consumed. Another type of copolymer um, studied by uh, ACOM will be the dye block and these are uh, made by raft. Uh, this uh, example shown here, it's a, a methyl metacrylate uh, first block, followed by an addition of the uh, butylacrylate monomer, which uh, builds the second uh, polymer block. Uh, large scattering data is shown in the graph versus, monomer, com versus monomer conversion. And you can see that uh, together with theoretical fields and predictions, and we can see that uh, these agree uh, very well with the real data. Uh, the next type of gradient copolymer studied by ACOM was produced by nitroxide mediated polymerization. And here we have styrene butylacrylate polymerization. Uh, what we show here, it's instantaneous composition instantaneous fraction of uh, styrene versus conversion for reactions done with different initial compositions. Um, 
This allows us to get composition profile for the same reactions. As uh, I mentioned before, if one uh, adds an uh, automatic uh, the, um, injector and GPC columns, we can have the reaction followed uh, by this technique as well. And what we did, we had uh, a simultaneous, continuous non-chromatographic and discrete chromatographic detection at the same time for a, a polymerization reaction with acrylate. And what we can get uh, by doing this reaction is typical ECOM data, what the signals behave as mentioned, uh, refractive index because of the last scattering increase following the polymer production, if it decreases following the monomer consumption. Uh, in the same time, SEC data follow the reaction progress, uh, and these are, these would be injections made by different from samples, but here these are just automatic injections. Basically, you have the, a uh, valve which switches from uh, a different intervals of time, allowing the sample to go to the loop and to, in, in, to get into the chromatographic columns. Uh, shown uh, uh, on the, in the graph on the right are refractive index, UV, scattering, and viscosity signals. Uh, obtained during this reaction. One important field, as I mentioned, is the heterogeneous phase polymerization and uh, our um, approach to emulsion polymerization was uh, to uh, introduce an original uh, approach by online monitoring both polymer and particle properties. Uh, Shown here are uh, raw data and analysis for free radical polymerization of methyl metacrylate in emulsion. So basically, uh, our strategy is to withdraw as small steam from reactor and dilute it with aqueous solvent. In this way, we have the particle properties preserved. As you can see here, monomer, polymer particles, different other things. In this way, we are, our detectors, um, based on mist scattering or dynamic light scattering, provide uh, size and size distribution and particle number. Uh, on the other hand, another stream uh, is withdrawn from reactor and diluted with an organic solvent, which is miscible with both polymer, monomer, and also with aqueous uh, solvent. Uh, in our case, tetrahydrofuran was used. In this way, the polymer is, uh, the particle content is uh, dissolved, and uh, we have typical polymer calls, and we have typical analysis for it, such as molecular weight, reduced viscosity, and other features. In this way, we offer uh, simultaneously a characterization of polymer and particles, making a bridge between the polymer and colloid walls. For a contrasting view, molecular weight for living and free radical polymerization in emulsion is shown here. Uh, so different trends um, in molecular weight is butyl acrylate is added in short or continuously for a nitroxide mediated polymerization and for a free radical polymerization. Typical living trend is obtained here uh, for NMP reactions, um, molecular weight, linear with conversion. For the free radical polymerization, we have um, high molecular weight going down with conversion as termination occurs. Uh, very low molecular weight as the monomer is introduced semi batch ones, as expected. Uh, this allows us to get into the next step, which is predictive control to programmable reagent flow to the reactor. Uh, here, uh, we uh, looked into free radical copolymerization, and uh, uh, since we get detailed quantitative reaction kinetics with ACOM, it allows us 
for predictive control for uh, conversion kinetics, for molecular weight distribution, and of copolymer composition. Uh, going to uh, typical equations which relates our uh, monomer concentration to uh, flow features. Or we could be in the star regime, in a flooded regime, or in isoreactive regime. And following these equations, we can have results on predictive control of molecular weight. In this case, uh, molecular weight for a free radical polymerization of acrylamide is shown here in batch mode, typical free radical behavior. Uh, then in a mode where monomer was flow uh, to keep molecular weight constant. And uh, last, monomer was calculated to be flow as in order to have an uh, increase in molecular weight. Another uh, type of control we achieve is controlling composition drift uh, for high drift comonomers, styrene sulfonate and acrylamide. Uh, they are natural trend uh, in case of more fraction of styrene sulfonate versus styrene for a batch reaction will be shown here in black. Uh, if we flow one of the comonomers, in our case, the styrene sulfonate, we could reach quasi isoreactive regime or we could have styrene sulfonate flooded type of reaction. So we could reverse the copolymer composition as desired. <laughs> 